Welcome to the Council of Better Business Bureau's podcast, Better Business, Better Series, where we will explore top of mind topics with business and industry leaders to understand the leading trends and innovations that continue to push the envelope in today's marketplace. For the Better Business, Better Series podcast, I'm Will Johnson. April is Financial Literacy Month, and today on our podcast series, we're focusing on topics that address small business owners and entrepreneurs who want to build successful business with a solid financial backbone. One really important step in this process is putting customer needs first. We're joined by Yumi Clark, Vice President, New Product Development at Capital One. Yumi, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. So, Yumi, when we talk about customer first and customer needs, uh, one process that Capital One has has in mind is this process called design thinking. Tell us about what design thinking is uh, and w- how that plays into developing a business from, from the very beginning. Yes. Uh, so design thinking is a methodology that we use here to develop products. Um, it's a creative problem-solving method where we put the customer first to solve the business and the technical goals um, that we're trying to achieve in the business. What that actually means is that we test our way into thinking about the solution to a particular problem by not only asking them questions, but also observing them to find out what the root cause of a particular problem might be and finding novel, new, creative ways of solving that to better suit the needs of the small business. And so when we're talking about design thinking and looking at customers and observing them, are we talking about technical businesses or can this apply to businesses across the board pretty much? Uh, All across the board, actually. Um, When we think about uh, small businesses, we're not just looking at technical businesses while we're providing um, online digital tools as well as analog tools. Um, We're looking at everybody and anything. So the small businesses could be anyone from your corner small business that's running like a printing shop all the way up to a business that has uh, 10, 20, 25 employees where they have Um, quite a number of processes that are involved as they are running their business. Okay. So core to this idea, again, is customer service and putting the customer first. You talked about that, how the idea is to observe, ask questions, see what the customer needs. Tell us your thoughts about customer service. It's pretty apparent uh, for a lot of businesses why it's so important, but for small businesses, especially in in this case. Yes. So in terms of customer service, um, actually, when we think about design thinking and we think about developing products for the small business, we don't distinguish customer service as being a separate part of the process. We see it as being a part of the whole process of that ecosystem. Um, So when we have customer service, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the end email or the end phone call that happens when there is a problem. We think about customer service throughout the pipeline. So for example, um, as we are going through developing a product and let's say on our deposit products, our banking products, whether it be checking or savings, as we're going through that, um, what is the best way that we can give support to our small businesses? That's ingrained in the steps that we take as we provide the checking and savings account. So for example, we would have um, little prompts to help them figure out what needs to be entered. If they have a problem, there could be a chat bot that pops up so that they can, so the small business can actually chat with the customer or the prospective customer at that point in time. So it's throughout that whole cycle that we believe customer service is being serviced. And supported. And again, you talked about observing, asking questions as part of your role at Capital One. Then I'm a small business owner. I come to you. Uh, do you actually help me then reach out to customers and observe customers? How does that work? Uh, yes. So um, there's a couple of things that we do here at Capital One um, with regards to our design thinking process. The first one is we do observations and we do focus groups and usability tests where we have people coming into the labs and giving us feedback where we are observing and they are explicitly telling us what their problems are. And in that process, um, we are developing applications that help the small business. Uh, Similarly, those small businesses are sometimes asking us um, for help 
uh, in terms of their business, at which time, as we're running these tests, there could be suggestions that we're making. Um, additionally, what we do is we provide uh, mentorship opportunities through some of the partnerships that we have. And through that, for example, there's one that we have with some of our Future Edge initiatives. Um, and we've partnered to provide some of these design thinking best practices to the small businesses. And some examples of those are through the businessadvising.org service, which is an online mentoring platform that matches small businesses with expert advisors. And we are one of the partners there. And another program that we do is part of an Action Texas and SCORE program where we provide a getting down to business innovative technical assistance training course that helps small businesses think about how design thinking can help improve what they're doing uh, in their daily lives. So as part of this program, this, this idea of design thinking, you certainly work with a lot of small businesses, I imagine. What are some of the mistakes you see uh, potential business owners making in the initial process of product development? What are some common missteps that could cause issues m- maybe down the road? Sure. Um, one of the biggest uh, missteps that we see in terms of small businesses is the fact that we aren't solving the right problem. And because we don't solve the right problem, the solution is not geared towards that particular problem. So it's actually the idea itself. It could be that not only is the idea not the right one, or maybe that's one aspect of that, or the way that it's being put into place is not the, the right way to do it. Yes, that's certainly true. And then when that idea is um, thought about, there's a lot of different ways that you can execute upon the solution to that particular problem. And that's the part where we see the misstep happening because you end up solving the wrong part of the problem or we've just made a mistake in terms of what that solution to that problem actually is. Can you think of any examples off the top of your head of someone who maybe had an idea and then it really shifted over time or the way they were doing it? Sure. The biggest one that actually comes to mind right now is just around thinking about uh, invoicing and small businesses. Typically, small businesses have challenges with regards to cash flow and getting paid on time. Um, There are different solutions that can be placed with regards to that problem. It could mean that you send an email to the small business. Um, It could mean that you have some type of mobile notification that's going out. It could mean that you are calling them up. Those are all different solutions to a particular problem that a small business might have with regards to invoicing and cash flow. Oftentimes in that relationship a small business has with their customers, it's quite uncomfortable for a small business to go and ask their customer for the monies that they haven't been paid. And so it becomes a very challenging relationship between the customer and the small business. In times like that, the solution might be one where they're getting their assistant to email and say, can you please pay that invoice? However, if they used an online digital tool where there were reminders set up and those reminders were set up in agreement between the small business and the customer, that would relieve all the friction that the small business owner is feeling and that angst that the small business owner might be feeling. And so that's a place where the small business would kind of test and learn the way into solving that particular problem with regards to cash flow. So it sort of takes out that email from a human being and it, that may feel sort of negative or, or feel sort of annoying to some people who may owe on an invoice. Yes, definitely. And at the end of the day, um, small businesses, they have a lot to juggle. And in addition to that, it's a very personal relationship oftentimes that small businesses have with their customers. And so making that as positive as possible while making sure the mechanics of their business, whether it be around um, getting invoices paid, making sure that they're communicating effectively with their customers, all those little things they have to think about and balance all the time, which is the challenge that most small businesses have as they're running their kind of daily financial lives. That's a great example of one that I might not have thought of, a a very specific instance with invoices in particular. So how does Capital One, let's back up again to design thinking, how does Capital One think about design thinking? Are there specific examples you can share that perhaps highlight Capital One's approach to the idea? 
Yes. Um, so most recently with design thinking, uh, we want to be as close to the customer as possible. Uh, one of the examples that we do, which is quite unusual um, versus some of the other folks that are out there, is that we do design and dine conversations on a regular basis in addition to a biweekly customer interview set that we go out into the market. Um, when we say the market, we mean the national market. So we do things such as going to the customer sites themselves to not only observe them, but to see the problems that those small businesses are facing. Additionally, in terms of a wine and dine design event, what we do there is we bring the customers in um, and we have tables of eight to 10 people that are talking about the challenges they're facing. We take those, we consolidate them, and then we immediately start thinking about how to prototype potential solutions to their problem. The next step that we take from there is basically figuring out how we can design these elements, the themes that we've heard, into the actual product. Once we do that, we then take that back into the market with not only customers that we have right now, but potential prospective customers to understand whether it solved the needs of that particular user base. And then we scale it out and make it a full functioning product that everybody can use. It's a pretty cool kind of creative process where there's a lot of back and forth and we're figuring out really how to test with the small business to really solve the needs of that particular customer. Maybe you could just call it design and wine. <laughs> Very much so. And with the, uh, the, the good wine, I'm sure a lot more creative ideas come out. There you go. Uh, and so also, and then one last question, with technology, with uh, devices that we can speak to, mobile apps on mobile phones, uh, this is certainly affecting and changing how we approach or how you are approaching a customer's uh, design thinking. Yes, that's very much uh, the case. Um, so as we are thinking about design thinking, there's definitely that aspect of thinking end-to-end -end with regards to the product. You asked me previously around um, how do small businesses do design thinking? You don't have to be a design thinking expert to do this. You don't have to be a designer or a product manager to think in the ways of design thinking. It's that encouraging experimentation and creativity and really testing your way in to be successful. And as a small business owner, um, you're truly the experts of your customers and thinking about that and incorporating it into your small business daily lives is the most important aspects of how design thinking fits personally within that particular business. And Capital One is also looking at that kind of from the Uber perspective to support the small businesses. Okay. Really great advice and thoughts, uh, food for thought for small business owners. And this idea of design thinking is one that I think we're hearing more and more about outside of just individual, maybe uh, in the digital world, right? Yes, very much so. Uh, we're seeing it in terms of great design and great products that are being developed, whether it be in the digital or online space or in the analog space. Um, the way that you can probably tell the best is that when it hits, the small business or the customer really doesn't really think about it as being a friction point to use that particular item. You'll alternatively, when it's not being thought of from that design thinking perspective, you'll also know because as a customer of that particular item, it won't feel completely smooth or it won't feel completely right. And you'll know that all of that incorporation of the customer's problem wasn't taken into account. Okay. Great. Yumi Clark, Vice President, New Product Development at Capital One. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. If you'd like to learn more about the Better Business Bureau and Financial Literacy Month, visit us at bbb.org. And for the Better Business, Better Series podcast, I'm Will Johnson. You just enjoyed Better Business, Better Series podcast. Be sure to tune in next month for a brand new episode. To learn more about our other shows, visit betterbusiness.blueberry.com. That's betterbusiness.blubrry.com and subscribe. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are the views and opinions of the guests, not those of the Better Business Bureau, Council of Better Business Bureaus, or program affiliates. This podcast is for information and educational purposes only and is copyrighted with all rights reserved. This podcast is protected by Blueberry's Terms of Service.